Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. I'm Nilofa, your watercolor artist. Today we're going to start off with painting a simple landscape, a sunset beautiful landscape. So let's get started. So today we're going to start off with a simple painting. For that I'm using a Chitrapat paper. This paper is 100% cotton paper made from raw rag cloth, so it's very easy, cheap, and very and has a very lovely texture to it. This is a um, size of around A5 or a little bigger than A5. I have taped my paper uh, using a plastic cello tape. You can use a masking tape, a cello tape, anything to just mask your paper for all four sides. The main thing is that the four corners should be intact so that the colors don't run out and it's properly uh, covered. That's it. So next, the brushes that I'm using is a mop brush, an eight number brush. And this brush is from a silver black velvet. You can use any brush. It's a four number brush, but I'm using this brush specifically because it has a beautiful tip on the front. I, I also have another brush which is something similar which is a Princeton Velvet Touch brush. I will add the links to the brushes in the caption below. You can use any brush, it can be a liner brush, a thin brush, just because we want to get these lovely um, weed grasses, that's why. For colors, I'm using my Winsor Newton and Mission Gold paints. I have them on my palette. To begin, we will first, I have a spray bottle. I like to use the spray bottle. so. To reactivate it reactivates the paint very quickly just so just spray them off on your palette it becomes wet and it's easier to use it as always let's start off with applying a fresh layer of water on your paper a nicely evenly coated water water wash on the paper to begin we're going to be using a purple shade you can mix your crimson and your blue for blue, you can use Persian or a cobalt blue. You'll get a lovely lavender shade. Add it on the top of the paper and then just uh, keep something below the book or your pad so that it lifts off your pad and the color will automatically flow down below, which giving you a beautiful sky effect. This lovely flow creates a very good texture on the paper. Apply a second layer of the purple shade this time you can also apply this layer in a diagonal format okay so that you get nice crisscross uh, brush strokes and the color also flows in very well give it two or three layers of purple then nicely mix off uh, make sure that the color is nicely blended and not patched once you've added a purple shade now let's take a fresh just a crimson color and apply it in the same way a uh, diagonal strokes go from the top to the bottom of the paper also tilt the board it this way the color will or, uh, flow down and mix and blend with each other make sure you blend the crimson and the purple together uh, tilting the board is a very very um, casual way of uh, mixing the colors they just flow into it, each other and looks very soothing in the end bottom you could you can add a little scarlet and a mix of Indian yellow to give that nice um, warm effect of the sunset. Once you've added them, mix them nicely again in the diagonal way. Pick up the board and tilt it so that it blends in very well. Uh, once you've done this, take a damp brush, clean your brush properly and remove a little, make a circle or, and remove some color from the middle where you've added the yellow, yellow and scarlet. Now this is a lifting technique which you can do only with a damp brush. Make sure that your brush is fully clean and uh, clean your brush once or twice the color. You can also take up that, take a tissue paper and just dab, uh, the, dab it where you have removed the color. That helps you to make, uh, remove more excess of color. Then take a, a a clean brush which is not wet and just remove the brush of the color which is coming inwards or which is outwards 
remember to do all these lifting techniques with a damp a clean brush and a tissue paper. Clean it nicely and make it circle so that it is a little prominent, uh, prominent for you. This is a more fun way of picking up the color. The other ways you can also do is use a masking fluid or you can cut the masking tape into a circle and stick it over there so that the color doesn't enter and you can block the color. But I feel using this technique is more natural. You get that nice soft edges around the sun now we're done with the background let's wipe out these extra colors and keep it aside for drying till then let's take a piece of paper any piece of paper is okay like a cartridge paper or a cellulose paper or any paper is fine we will use this paper to practice the wheat grass that we will be painting over the background that we just painted so hold your brush, this, I'm using a thin brush, and hold your brush at where the barrel ends, okay? We want a very thin line, that's why we're going to start with thin strokes. Just use the tip of the brush to get that nice thin lines, you know, this just a tip. Uh, if your brush does not have a tip, you can switch to a thinner brush, like a rigger brush or a lighter brush, or you can use just a zero number brush, that's also fine. We need to get like a very very thin strokes from the tip, okay? So try uh, using a very light hand also and keeping the brush at 90 degrees, like straight. If you rest your hand or if your brush is not uh, properly rested, I mean, if it's not 90 degrees, the, you, will lot, you will add some pressure and then you will not get that nice thin stroke. So try to get a very uh, thin stroke just using the tip of the brush and also don't use a lot of colors because we don't need a lot of colors we need less colors next is make sure that you are not uh, making a straight branch we want a, a slanted branch like going in the angle it's never going to be the straight line it always is in the angle like a curve because uh, trees branches they have a little curve of flow in when they are when they are growing in the nature there's always a flow right so add a, like a flowy curve uh, also like imagine there's a wind blowing so we need that little flow in the in your branches in your weed grass okay. very thin strokes try to practice these thin strokes and then giving these V curve and then the next one is your like this adding a little pressure and making these V, v strokes V shape strokes now, uh, before we begin, let's just recap what we've learned quickly before we go to the main background, which has completely dried. So, V-shaped strokes add full pressure. You can also use this V-shaped stroke with uh, like a dry brush. You'll get nice texture. Thin lines and thin lines that are attached to your branches. You can uh, mix both of the strokes too, the V-shape and the thin lines. Make sure you add a flow and not a straight, uh, just like a T or a F shape. So our background has dried and now let's get started. I'm going to pick up some color from the sun. You can add, uh, use a dab brush and remove some color from there. I just take a tissue paper, dab it and remove it. I'm just doing this so that there is a still more fresh white area. So let's mix some color for our wheat grass. I'll be mixing paint spray, some burnt sienna for a brown touch and a little crimson, red crimson. So you get that nice um, evening, uh, evening dark effect with a little touch of red. Just take the color and start adding thin small lines from the bottom, bottom right area. These are going to be not too long lines, they're going to be just short lines for now. Because we're going to be adding two layers. One is going to be the short line layers. And another one on the top of it would be the longer ones that go up. With <clears throat> Once you add the small lines, take a spray bottle and just sprinkle some water over those short lines. Now why we're doing this? To get that nice uh, mist effect of using the uh, spray bottle using a little spray because these little lines will look like as if they're in the far distance 
creating a perspective to your painting. Uh, the front ones will add as the front view that you are directly looking at and these will add as they are the background, create, giving you a nice background effect. Now once you've done this, let's start adding the little lines and the dots that we learned previously to these. Make sure your uh, grass, the wheat grass is going in a curved direction because they are, there's, imagine there is a wind blowing from the side and and it's an evening time and uh, everything is little, little flowing in the curve. So you make sure that your grasses, the weed grass, has a curve and has a curve and when you add them add these strokes the longer strokes they are also going in a curved direction that is the left side facing the left side add little thin lines that go all the way up to the purple area uh, again make sure they are curved they are not going straight up ahead add some thick of level i'm not going to be adding little, little thick lines too like just to give a little um, you can say mix match the lines some few of, imagine like few of the grass lines are together and few of them are away from each other once you're done let's start adding now this is a longer process this is going to take some time take your time add a little mini small strokes combining them with the thick ones take your time Think about adding like you're going to be adding multiple layers of details. These little lines are very delicate. Like think you're trying to add a very delicate lines. The more delicate they are, the more thinner they are, the more delicate they will look, and the more precise and more beauty they will add. Thin lines create beauty in your uh, simple paintings. So try to achieve thin lines. Practice these thin lines on the sides. Here also, you can add a little splatter of the same color and then use the same splatter to create these little thin lines too. Make sure you do not do a very heavy splattering when you are using the splatter technique to create these thin lines. The splatter has to be very a very soft and small splatter so that you do not end up ruining your background. Add the same technique everywhere and add more delicate, make it more dense and bushier, the whole wheat grass. Apply the same technique everywhere, thin strokes combined with the thick strokes and uh, V-shaped strokes using dry brush technique and so do follow me for more tutorials uh, last few weeks have been a little tough for us and we haven't been around so thank you for sticking around uh, thank you for uh, always supporting our channel we're really really grateful to you guys who uh, for supporting our work and our channel we have been uh, unavailable for the past few a few weeks because of the covid situation and it was quite difficult for us to um, create any tutorials create any new content thank you so much for sticking around we would love to hear more about more from you guys but what would you like to see and what kind of techniques you would want to uh, want me to show you i am planning to do a series of different uh, reviews and uh, techniques so if you if you have anything specific please do leave uh, in the comment section below at what you would like to see so here i am almost done adding last few strokes and some few splatter you can add a final set of splatter and just blend them out with a damp brush that will give a nice fresh look final fresh look to your painting and that's about it make sure when you are peeling off your masking tape do it very slowly and peel the tape outwards so that your paper does not peel off and does not ruin your painting um thank you so much guys and it is so good to be back uh, with new tutorials and we are hoping to uh, not hoping actually going to be there around see you next week with a new interesting tutorial do let us know what you would like to see and what 
you would want us to make create for you um looking forward to seeing you guys next week all right thank you so much take care and bye bye